Well, our topology is certainly starting to shape up here. And as you could probably tell from the title of this video, it's time to bootstrap the vManage. This is really important too, because we're getting a glimpse into how we're going to be working with these Viptela components. And we are going to jump in and start to bootstrap it. So the first thing that I wanted to call your attention to is remember, we are sitting right now at the CLI mode, but there is another mode and that is the V shell and the V shell, as you can see, brings us into native Linux. In fact, if I did uname a, we can see the specifics on the version information for the Linux. So isn't that cool? We have the V shell, the Linux shell. And then if I exit, we're going to get back to that default of the Viptela CLI, which as you already know, is really made to make us feel as home as possible coming from our iOS. So bootstrapping these devices, we uh, first do our configure terminal. So that certainly makes us feel right at home, doesn't it? And then we are going to do, for instance, system to get in the global system configuration mode. And here we can use the host dash name to go ahead and give our vManage a host name. And then the system IP we know is a key component. So we will go ahead and give the system IP of this device. Then we know there's the site ID and that's an important component. So we'll go ahead and provide the site ID. We can then say that we want admin tech on failure. So we are going to be creating great tech support information. Should there be a failure of any of these components, the SP organization name, we know there is the organization name and the SP organization name. We discussed these. These are really critical. We'll say um, Lam Lee SD WAN and make sure I get that spelled right. I do. And then we're going to do the organization name Lam Lee SD WAN. Excellent. And the V bond. Uh, IP address that we are going to be using. So this will be at 10, 10, 1, 3. And then we can enter VPN zero. We know there's VPN zero and uh, this is in band. And then there's VPN 512 for out of band uh, control connections and management. So inside of VPN zero, we have an interface. And the interface that we have in VPN zero is ethernet zero. And so now you can see we're in ethernet zero configuration mode and I can do my IP DHCP client on this interface and make sure this interface is in the no shutdown state. Great. And then our interface for uh, one moment interface. All right. We need to exit and then do interface ethernet one. Excellent. And under this interface, we can do IP address. For example, this is going to be 10.10.1.1 10 slash 24. Got to love that prefix notation we're able to do. This is going to be a tunnel interface and we you know shut that we exit and we exit again. And in this VPN, we will do the default route and we're going to be directing all unknown traffic to 10.10.1.254. So there is our default route and let's see what else would I want to do uh, via bootstrapping. We can exit from VPN zero and we could enter, of course, VPN 
512 for the out of band management uh, interfaces. And we actually don't have one of these. So uh, that's fine. I mean, obviously, we're going to have our management only VPN 512. That's a mandatory component. But we have two interfaces on this vManage. And we've got one of those interfaces inside of VPN 0 for the connectivity to our local devices. And then we've got Ethernet 1 in the VPN 0. So let's see. Do I want to leave it this way? Uh, yeah, let's, let's see how this configuration uh, works out for us. And again, you can always come in and modify the topology in EVNG. You can then modify the topology when you are configuring the device as you now uh, know how to do watching me, right? It's, it's, it's really not bad at all. If I go ahead and complete my config and want to test things, we can do a commit and quit. Remember now we are working with the CLI that's a lot like the, uh, frankly, it's a lot like Juniper where we are making configurations and those configurations are not committed until we actually commit them. And I'm doing it in one fell swoop here with the commit and quit. So notice that's going to commit the configs that we have and it's going to get us out of the configuration mode and return us to the default prompt there. So a very valuable uh, verification command that I showed you is the uh, show interface pipe tab for the tabular output. And here we can see, look at this, great. We see our system IP, we see our ethernet one uh, interface, and we see the Ethernet zero interface and we take note of the IP address because we should be able to access that now via the browser. So we are going to 192.168.0.37 and what was the IP? Dot 39. So here we go. Dot 39. And look at this. This is great. We're going to proceed even though it's unsafe. And here is our own homegrown. We built it ourselves. Cisco vManage that we have just logged into for the first time. And look at that. There's our beautiful dashboard. We can see vManage is all up and healthy. We don't have VBON yet. We don't have WAN Edge devices yet. We don't have vSmart devices yet, but we have vManage in place and that's just a beautiful thing and we are logged into that. And if we uh, head over here, look at this, we're starting to get, you know, notices that, hey, look, this is all going to be based on certificate based authentication and we got problems. And obviously, we're going to be working with certificates uh, coming up here big time because we know that is going to be a requirement. So as you saw, big focus in this video, the bootstrapping of these devices. Thankfully, we have that Viptela CLI, which is going to be very, very similar to iOS for us with some key differences I showed you, but you'll get used to it very, very quickly and you'll be a pro at the Viptela CLI in no time. So let's wrap this video up here. We're super excited by this milestone, seeing Cisco vManage in our own home-based practice lab. You gotta love it.